Sport24 editor Garen Namney and chief sport writer Rob Howing join us in the studio this morning to give us a recap of the latest Rio Olympic action. And of course, what all South Africans are talking about this morning, Wade Finikak's world record gold medal win in the 400 meters. Gentlemen, what a race that was. Garen, I know you woke up for it. Um, I tried to wake up for it, um, <laughs> but nonetheless, I've watched the highlights mm. a good few times. What does this mean for South Africa? First of all, how do you think, well, how did Wade Finikak just suddenly pull that one out of the bag, considering he got the fifth fastest time in the semi-final um, and then won and raced in lane eight? Yeah, no, firstly, a fantastic um, result for South Africa, the first gold medal at the Rio Olympics, which was great to see, long time coming. I was a bit worried for a while that it was going to leave it to Casa Semenya on the second last day of the Olympics to actually get that first gold. Mm. But hats off to uh, Wade van Niekerk, world record run, breaking a 17-year-old record, Michael Johnson, now he's mm. famous in the world of athletics, broke his record 53.03. I think Wade's pretty much the only person now who can actually break that record again, go below mm. the 53 second mark, which will be obviously fantastic to see as well. Um, 43 seconds, what did I say? 53? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 43, sorry. 43 seconds. It's okay, late um, night. <laughs> very late night. Um, you, as you said, running mm. in lane eight, mm. um, running blind, as they sort of mm. say in the world of the next, everyone behind him, they're sort of watching him, he can't mm. really see them. The reason Just to interrupt you quickly, Garen, what is that uh, running in lane eight in terms of the sort of extra distance that you've got to cover? I mean, what, what, what sort of, I heard there was like, a, it's like a 13% I'm not, uh, extra. Yeah, look, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. I mean, to, to be quite honest, I mean, it's obviously the way it's staggered. Mm. It should be as close to equal as possible. Obviously, you know, if you run in the very extreme left mm. of your lane and don't run out of it, it might be uh, the shortest route to, to the finish line. But um, they were talking about the fact that lane eight has less of a of a bend, if you like. You mm. can imagine you're running sort of on the outskirts yeah, rather sure. than the first lane, which has got the sharpest bend. You sort of keep running around in a circle, if mm. you like. So, you know, it might suit c certain people. It might suit others less. But um, the reason he was in lane eight, as you said, is because he had mm. the fifth fastest time only heading into the final, mm. sort of eased up in his semifinals. And those are all important, those semifinals, the times that you post there mm. sort of dictates which lane you obviously run in, in the final. So running at lane eight obviously didn't seem to affect him much he very much ran his own race went out hard from the gun and didn't let up i think the commentator once mm. stage suggested he might be being caught but he seemed to go away and finish finished incredibly strong whereas the two that finished in the silver and bronze medal behind him you know they sort of staggered over the line a little bit both ran really good times but there was clear daylight between you know mm. wade and and the other medalists mm. Rob, you've obviously no doubt see, seen the race and uh, you had a fair bit to say about it, I saw on Twitter as well. Uh, what did you make of, of that performance? And I guess, you know, with the track events only sort of just started a few days ago, uh, just weighing on some of the uh, well, other medal, which was in the long jump. Um, and let's not forget Sambin in the 100 meters. I mean, he did pretty well. Yeah, Not meddling, but... Absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, on, on, on any other day or any other weekend, uh, we would have been able to bask just in the pride of having a South African uh, sprinter in the 100 metres final. I mean, you know, that, that hasn't happened for close on a century. Is that correct, mm. Garen? Uh, um, and a phenomenal achievement. So he ended uh, uh, fifth um, very narrowly behind uh, Johan Blake, which, which gives you some idea mm. of just how he ran, you know, pretty much out of his yeah. skin. Uh, so we've got to say hats off to him as well, and it's a pity in a way that uh, you know a lot of his uh, um, the, the brilliance of that run just for him as an individual was was naturally eclipsed by by Wade van Niekerk. I mean, mm. Wade, uh, you just got to say it's it's one of those instances in sport where you you feel you know I'm privileged that it's it, it happened in my lifetime kind of thing because uh, it it really is it does count as one of the spectacular moments of South African sport. I can't think of any anything that that actually betters it. Mm. Um, you know, we've had various luminary individuals over the years. When you think of the you know, the various golfers, the Gary players, the Bobby Locks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but th that particular feat, you know, winning such a, a blue chip uh, event mm. um, at the Olympics, 400 meters, one of the glamour, one of the glamour races, um, and certainly one of my favorite races to watch is because, you know, it's, you know, the 100 is sort of over in a flash. Yeah. Um, 400, a little take bit more in. tactical, a yeah. little bit more opportunity to sort of assess things. As Garen said, you know, running in that outside lane, mm. I, I, I really liked his attitude before the race. Um, when they said, is, is lane eight going to be an impediment to you? And he seemed pretty calm and pretty mm. chilled about it uh, and, and, and quite resolute. I saw a lot of the, in the aftermath of the, of the, of the, the big race, uh, people saying, you know, well, was, um, you know, was Wade sort of uh, uh, shocked, staggered by it? Um, that wasn't my immediate impression. I think it may be a few seconds later, but when he finished, 
it was almost as if, you know, I knew I was going to do this. I, I just I saw a real confidence in his body language mm -hmm. that for me bodes well for, for the road ahead because he's only 24 years old, I think. Mm -hmm. So clearly a, a, a long road to go still, a very enticing road in, in athletics. Um, let's not forget that he's, he's uh, you know, uh, he runs uh, other uh, shorter distances too pretty smartly. Yeah. So we're going to see plenty more achievement uh, from him down down the road and uh, it was just an amazing amazing thing one of those re real sort of pick me up uh, vibes because let's mm. face it we haven't had too many of those uh, in the last few years you know we've sort of South African sport is almost sort of we've become the sort of you know uh, always competitive but almost these sort of polite seconds you know mm. it's uh, and it was time that changed and boy didn't he didn't he alter that um, that whole mindset I think now he's given a real catalyst for for South African sport as a whole going forward mm. let's let's sort of set the bar you know to his level for, for excellence and let's hope that we can you know everybody now sort of uh, you know follows through on, on sort of aspiring to, to meet that that staggering sort of level of success.